In this video, we're going to look at relational math. Remember, we're working with relational databases. Those are databases that end up being realized in tables. And so we're just basically saying things we can do with tables. And here we're going to uh, uh, restrict ourselves to start with just what's called a selection and projection. Okay, so we're going to do what's called like relational algebra. And so let's just think about uh, mm. sort of regular algebra one learns in school. So you one has rules for combining numbers or symbols standing in for the numbers. And then those rules of what you can do make up what we call algebra. And then if you combine different things, something that comes up in uh, computer science often enough are Boolean variables, things that are true or false, then and we have ways of combining them, and then that's known as Boolean algebra. And so in what we're going to talk about here is things that you can do with relations or tables. And so we're going to talk about relational algebra. Okay. And so then the things that you can do um, are known as operations. So if you're back in sort of regular old, you know, algebra, then, um, you know, addition and multiplication and so on, those things are the sort of algebraic operations of sort of regular math. If we were in the Boolean example, Boolean algebra, we have like anding, oring, notting, invert, or inverting, things like that. Um, another thing, and then we want to know what operations are available in relational algebra. That's what we'll start talking about. Um, and then in general, uh, we talk about uh, how many things an operation acts on, you know, how many things are being uh, acted on or combined. Um, and so uh, there are things that act on one element or things that act on two elements and and they could go higher than that, but let's let's stick there. So in regular algebra, if I were taking, if I had the, talked about the, the square root operation, that would be unary. I sort of act. I have an, one number and I am taking the square root of it. Um, whereas addition would be binary, uh, a binary operation. I'm taking two numbers and bringing them together to make one number by adding a different binary operation would be multiplication. So again, we're going to be working on tables or relations. So in, in, in the abstract, we often talk about relations, but then when we actually sort of make the database, we often refer to it as a table. So this very abstract thing called relational algebra is just really things we can do with tables um, and basically, so it ends up to be, uh, and we'll, other than putting data into tables, we're usually querying the tables, asking things about them. And so the things we can do with uh, the relational algebra, the things we can do with tables are basically how how do we query? What can we do in with our data manipulation language? The, the like how do we put in our data, take out our data, and also ask questions about our data. Okay. And one of the first things we're gonna talk about is selection. And uh, we've had in sort of our long introduction to databases, we found that we had like lots of synonyms that we talk about relation and table and file. And we all, we use them relatively interchangeably. And we talk about row and record and tuple. We talk about column attribute property field. So these are all sort of the same thing. And so now that we're gonna talk about uh, selection, sort of picking some things out, uh, another synonym pair is the condition or predicate. And this is usually some uh, true or false test so we can say, you know, is is a salary, assuming that we have some salary field, is the salary greater than 600,000? That's a lot of money. Um, or is a name equal to Smith? So we have our conditions, our uh, comparisons, our, our conditions. So we know we want the data if something is 
uh, true. Okay, and then we are said to be doing a selection. So we have this sort of large table and then it has uh, many rows and we are picking out rows. We are selecting from the rows that satisfy a condition or have a predicate. So I'm going to imagine that we have some database and lots of my screen captures are going to be from uh, Microsoft Access, as you'll see. Um, but imagine that we have some table of customers and we want to pick out the ones that are from uh, Pennsylvania, the state. And so um, some fancy notation, this is like sigma of R. And so we have the condition, the predicate of the state equaling PA, and we're going to pick out rows that satisfy that condition. And so we can uh, say here, so this is showing like uh, access and uh, these, are, these are fairly old screen capture. So there's probably, you know, old, like 10 year old access or maybe even longer. But um, in that first column there, you're saying I, I want customer dot star. I want all of the, all the fields, all the columns, but then uh, I pull down another column specifically the customer state and I'm asking for the criteria that's how that's how it's done in access and I'll show you the, the the sequel and it generates in a minute but that condition or predicate uh, is down there in that sort of uh, criteria row and this is what uh, access uh, at least back in the day they called query by design so they had like an interface but again I'm going to show you the the sequel generated in a minute. And here's the here's the results. Here's running the query, and you can see that it's uh, pulled out customers whose customer state is equal to PA or Pennsylvania. Okay, so here is the if if we looked at the uh, in access, if we said show me the actual uh, SQL statement, it's saying select. Um, now it sort of uh, listed for some reason, the, the customer first name and the customer last name, and then it said customer.star. So the customer.star would just say, give me all the fields. So we're saying select customer.star, all the fields from customer, the table customer or relation customer. And then it says where the customer.customer state is equal to PA. Um, we only have one table, so we could probably didn't need the customer dot all the places, but it I'll put it in and you can see it sort of it does excess uh, parentheses down there in the condition, but um, they do all match up properly and work. So this was just sort of generated automatically. So um, if I had been typing it myself from scratch, I wouldn't have all those uh, parentheses. So the next thing is, uh, while we're talking about uh, selection and applying some condition or predicate, uh, we can have uh, compound conditions or, so this comes in, we, we were talking about algebra early, so this is where we can bring in our Boolean algebra. The, the predicate, the condition is something that's true or false, so we could call it a Boolean, and then we have ways of combining Booleans to get other Booleans, that's our Boolean algebra. And some of the uh, basic Booleans uh, for combining uh, things that are true or false are and and or. So if two things are anded, then both things must be true in order for the compound anded condition to be true. And if we are oring a condition, then one or the other or both can be true. Or you can say alternatively that both must be false in other or to be false. So to, for the record to be eliminated, both conditions must be false. So, so for the and, both conditions must be true for it to be kept. In the or, both conditions must be false for it to be eliminated. Okay. And so now we're going to take that similar idea of customers from... Um, Pennsylvania, and we're going to sort of bring in a city. So I'm going to make sure I have a database 
that has I'm going to uh, have a city in Pennsylvania that I'm going to have Philadelphia, PA, and then I'm going to have like another city in PA. But I'm also going to have uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi. So then if I want specifically Philadelphia, PA, then I want the city to be Philadelphia and the state to be PA. And that's going to eliminate a city in PA that is not Philadelphia. And it's going to eliminate uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi, because the state, that state is Mississippi and not uh, Pennsylvania. Okay, so here I'm just showing the data and I'm adding, uh, I have people I want el eliminated. So I have somebody who's from uh, Philadelphia, Mississippi, I don't want them. I have somebody who's in Pottstown, PA, I don't want them. So I can do that by this anded condition. So if I were, again, over, I'm going to show you the SQL, but this is just an access. You pull over two columns to apply uh, conditions to, and we want the customer city to be equal with a criterion of being equal. Um, you can do sort of your conditions are often greater than, less than, or equal to. Um, and so here I'm doing like equal to conditions, but we can do um, the other conditions are possible so long as they evaluate to Booleans to true or false. Um, but here I'm asking that the customer uh, city be uh, Philadelphia and the customer state be PA. And since they are in the uh, same row, that same criterion row, then access knows that I want them anded. And so then I ran that query. I'll show you the SQL in a minute, but I ran that query and I am getting only the people who are from uh, Philadelphia, PA. So I had people from Philadelphia, Mississippi. Mississippi, they're not here. I have people from Pottstown, PA, and they're not here. It's only those who are from Philadelphia. In their city is Philadelphia and their state is PA. So then it's only Philadelphia PA that we get. And again, the anded condition is only that combined Boolean anded condition is only true when both parts are true. And here it is as in, in a SQL view, select customer star, select all the fields from the customer table where the customer city is Philadelphia and the customer state is PA. And again, sort of excessive parentheses, but that's what Access was doing at the time. Okay, we can also combine conditions to be um, sort of more more open. Uh, it, you know, the, the and tends you to restrict you more, the or tends to open things up a bit. And so um, here we are in access saying, I want customers from either Pennsylvania or New Jersey. So the customer state was either PA or NJ. And in access, if you were doing this query by design, the or was entered in a different row. So I'm asking here under that customer state column, I'm asking for it to be equal to PA or equal to New Jersey NJ. Um, again, it's implied as an or uh, because it's in a different row. So you, you see that row that says criteria and then under it, it says or. And I could scroll down and there would be more rows. I could have a I could have another or I could say or Delaware, but uh, I only did just the two states, but it's not by no means limited to, to that. OK, so then uh, here we are with the results and we see that we're getting uh, the states where Pennsylvania and New Jersey. We see Newark, New Jersey. We see Philadelphia, PA. We see Pottstown, PA. We see. Uh, both Pennsylvania and New Jersey states. So that was the ORD operation. And here it is in the uh, SQL view, select customer.star from customer where customer state is equal to PA in quotes. Again, if you're asking if something is uh, equal, um, 
to a particular string, then that string goes in quotes. And then the word keyword or or customer that customer state is equal to NJ, sort of excessive parentheses, semicolon only at the end. I've seen some people struggling because they they sort of were expanding a, a SQL a query and uh, forgot that the semicolon should only appear at the very very end. Um, what else would I would like to tell you about this? Um, if you are combining, if you have a fairly complicated condition where you are combining ors and ands, um, it's uh, reasonable that for us to mention at this place that there is an order of operations or precedence. And so anding is a bit like multiplication, is a it's sort of Boolean and is sort of analogous to multiplication in regular algebra, and Boolean or is more analogous to addition in regular algebra. And so if you want uh, a Boolean or to occur before a Boolean and, uh, you would need parentheses to, and you know, to force same ways in regular algebra. If you want to do addition, before multiplication, you need parentheses. If you want to do oring before you do ending, you need parentheses. So the next uh, relational algebra thing is to project out. And so with selection, we were picking rows. With, uh, with selection, we were picking rows. With projection, we are picking columns. And you remember when we talked about, you know, CODs rules and things that should be supported in a database, uh, a view was an important concept, sort of, sort of, that you should be able to set up for a user that they can only work with uh, part of a table. And, and so uh, you want to be able to sort of project out uh, fields and, and limit that. So that would be, so you want to do it in sort of a normal query and just get the things you want in the answer to your query, but also it's an important sort of built-in concept in databases that you need for security reasons, for simplicity or for security reasons, need to be able to uh, limit uh, tables uh, to views. So and one way to do that is uh, this projection operator. So you take your table and you you project out only the columns you want uh, a particular user to be able to see, and you sort of make of that query a view, and then they have that limited access. So I am in the you know in fancy systems. Uh, this is represented by a pie, and so you have your your relation, your table, and then you are uh, projecting out some columns not so you're not going to do select star you're going to do select and then some comma separated list of uh fields or columns that you actually want so again here we are in access and working in um query by design and you just sort of uh drag the columns you want so i wanted in this case the customer first name and the customer last name and then there they are in the query results. And then we will show the, there is the SQL. So now before, in many of our examples before, we were doing select customer star. The star is sort of give me everything. Now we are doing a projection. We are projecting out the customer first name and the customer last name. We're leaving all the address information and city and state and all that. We're leaving that behind and we're just dealing with names and we're pulling that from customer. This is a uh, fancy term projection. Okay, well, that was it for this one. More relational algebra to come. Uh, other types of relations that we'll talk about next are sort of unions and intersections and so on.